welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Aisha Salehu. On today's edition of the program, we'll take a look at cosmetic surgery. This is a type of surgery that aims to improve a person's appearance. However, it should be approached with caution. Procedures are available for almost any part of the body, but the choice to undergo cosmetic surgery should not be taken lightly. The results are often permanent, so it is important to be sure about the decision to use an appropriate practitioner and to have the right motivation. Our focus today is on liposuction, otherwise known as suction-assisted lipectomy. Let's meet with a cosmetic surgeon for more insight on liposuction. Let me just give you a brief definition of what cosmetic surgery is all about. You know, cosmetic surgery is where an individual or a person decides or chooses to have a, an operation or a medical invasive surgery for the purpose of changing their physical appearance. Okay, just for cosmetic reasons, not medical. Cosmetic reasons in the sense that the patient is not sick. He doesn't have any ailment, but he's just concerned about his physical, his or her physical appearance. And he just wants to go into that kind of procedure just to have a better look. We have other procedures too that are not invasive. We don't refer to those ones as cosmetic surgery. We just refer to them as cosmetic procedure. For instance, Botox injection, mm -hmm. dermal fillers. Those ones, we don't operate them. You know, they are cosmetic procedures. Now, talking about liposuction. Liposuction itself means removing excess fat from under the skin. Because the fat deposit is actually under the skin. And sometimes excess fats are deposited in some parts of the body that maybe the individual feel is not conducive or the individual is not, it doesn't want those fat there. So what we do is that we use liposuction as, as a technique to remove the excess fat from where the patient does not want it to be. Okay, the technique we use is called suction. Suction, okay. Now, this is what we do. Most times when we do cosmetic surgery, we don't put the patient to sleep. It's not under general anesthesia. Hmm? We do it under local anesthesia. That means the patient is awake all through the procedure. We communicate with the patient. The patient talks with us as the procedure is ongoing. All right? We have what we call tumorcent fluid is we do what we call infiltration first of all at the site where we intend to remove the fat. We do what we call infiltration with the tumorcent fluid. This tumorcent fluid actually numbs the place so that even though the patient is not asleep, the patient will not feel any pain when the procedure is ongoing. Well, fat can be deposited anywhere in the body, but the mo mo most, most times it's around the tummy area. I'm around the tummy area. Most people complain about fat deposit around the tummy area more than other parts of the body, especially women, you know. And some of them, you discover that fat deposition around the tummy is usually very common with women. And it usually affects their shape, okay? Because the hourglass shape that is synonymous with women, when you have a lot of fat deposit around that area, you discover it will disfigure that shape. And a lot of them want to take out the excess fat there so that they can still retain the shape. Apart from the fact that some, most people come because they want to take out the excess fat from the tummy, there are still some that come. Maybe they are, what they actually want to do is to do what we call breast augmentation or butt augmentation. What that means is that maybe the lady feels the size of the breast is not big enough. And instead of going for implants, they prefer to use their own fat. Because we can actually use the fat that maybe we harvested from the tummy to augment the breast. That is, we refer to that as fat transfer. So we can transfer the fat. Like after suctioning the fat, 
will process it because the fat cells are actually living cells. And when you remove them from, their, from, from any part of the body, you need to prepare them. So we prepare the fats and then we transport it or transfer it to where the patient wants us to, for instance, the breast. Now, what we do is this. When we do this transfer, the reason why we prepare the fats is because when we do this transfer, the fats need I mean, some days before they can establish themselves there. So they need nutrient. So we give them the necessary nutrients that will enable them to survive until they are able to establish another blood supply. And we can actually use this fat to enlarge the breast as much as the patient wants. And the good thing about this is that this fat is your own fat. So the patient is not going to react to it. The patient is not going to I mean, develop any allergic reaction, okay? Which is far better than actually using artificial implants, okay? Then we can also transfer it to the bot. You know, some women or even some men, they come around and they say, no, I don't like the size of my butt. I want it bigger, you know. So we can actually transfer the fat. We harvest the fat from the tummy area and then we transfer it also to the butt. As such, the fat is not wasted. We are only moving it from one location to the other. You know, like I mentioned, the patients, they are not actually sick. And because they are not sick, Cosmetic surgery should be, I mean, as much as possible, it shouldn't come with any side effect. Because the procedure is usually programmed. It's not an emergency, okay? And because it's not an emergency, we try as much as possible to minimize the side effects. But of course, like any other medical procedure, I mean, sometimes we do encounter some uh, side effects. For instance, this is an invasive procedure. There can be infection, okay? There can be infection. And what we do is that routinely, we put the patients on antibiotic to take care of that. We don't wait for the infection to occur before we treat. We just treat before the infection comes up. Then the other, the other side effect that, I mean, they can develop is swelling. Remember, we are using instrument to remove fat from where they are before. And as a result of that, tissue reaction can take place leading to uh, what we call swelling, leading to pain, you know, and uh, all that. But actually, just like I said, we usually prevent all this from happening, okay? The other thing also is the fact that they, they, they can sustain bones. Bones, first of all, mainly from friction because we use cannula and suction machine to suction the fat or to remove the fat. So in the process of using the cannula, sometimes as a result of friction, especially when we do what we refer to as aggressive liposuction, the individual can actually suffer burns, okay? Then, you know, sometimes also we use a, a laser, you know, laser to also come with the side effect of burns. So by and large, I think these are the few uh, complications that will come across from time to time. The, the, the essence of uh, cosmetic surgery is that you want the structure you are remodeling to look as natural as possible, okay? Now, for instance, the breast. This is one of the most sensitive parts of a woman's body. And when you try to recontour the breast, you must make sure that at least let it be as close to normal as possible. But sometimes, you know, the, we, we don't usually achieve that because when you transfer fat, you know, like I mentioned, you first of all have to prepare the fat because fats are living cells. And sometimes it's just like when you transplant some plants from a particular location to the other, you know, some of them will not survive, okay? Now, for instance, if I transfer, let, let's say like 100 mils of fat to the right breast, and I also transfer 100 mils of uh, fat to the left breast. You see, there's a possibility that, okay, maybe 70% of the fat I transfer to the right breast will survive. Maybe 60% to the left will survive, okay? Now, if I transfer 100 here, 100 here, 60 survive here, uh, 70 survives here, you know, the breast is not going to look the same. 
So this is some of the things that result. That's this some of the problems we come across from time to time. But there is provision to correct that. We call it touch up. You know, after the whole fat has settled, we we'll give you like a month. Okay, when all the fats would have settled, you come back again. We we'll take a second look at it. So if the patient say, look, I don't like this one. This one is now looking bigger than this. We do what we call touch up so that we can make the two breasts the same. Actually, you know, I mentioned that we use tumor cell fluid. Sometimes we, we, we infiltrate maybe up to like four liters, five liters of fluid. Okay. And then when we suction, some of the fluid will come out through the suction, but some the body will definitely have to absorb them. And when the body absorbs all this fluid, it goes into the system. It will look it, it, it now looking as if you've been overloaded with fluid. But of course, as long as your kidneys are functioning well, it's just a matter of this. The kidneys will filter those excess fluid and dispose of them. Then, don't forget that cosmetic surgery is just under the skin. Okay? We don't go beyond that. It's just under the skin, especially liposuction. Okay? Since it's just under the skin, the organs are are untouchable. We don't go near any of the organs. It's just the skin that we deal with when we do liposuction. If you are well trained, you should know that you are not supposed to go beyond the skin level, just under the skin. And usually when we suction a patient, you see, for instance, if you are right-handed, the cannula is in your right hand and your left hand is actually guiding you, you know? Your left hand guides you to make sure that the cannula does not go beyond where you want it to go. Okay? And unless otherwise you decide to just go down straight. If not, there's no way because you go in under the skin and you remain under the skin. Okay? Yeah. That's why the left hand will just be guiding you as you are doing your, your, your liposuction. No, the liposuction itself is the same. You know, because what it means is just removing excess fat. That's what the liposuction is all about. But now, what we do with the fat after harvesting is now the issue. After harvesting, some people will just tell us, I don't need the fat anywhere in my body, just throw it away. So we just discard it. Some will say, no, take it to my breast, we'll do that. Some will say, take it to my butt, we'll do that. Some will even say, okay, maybe transfer it to my arm, we we'll do that. Some will say, okay, use it as dermal fillers for my face to take away wrinkles. You know, we also do that, you know. So instead of using Botox or dermal fillers, we can actually use your fat to fill up your face and take away all these crease lines. So in India, China, in the U.S., we have banks for fats where they can store fats just the way they store semen, they store eggs, you know, and all that. But in Nigeria for now, we don't have any bank for, any bank for fat yet. Well, the, the, the thing is, um, before the procedure, all we do is that we ask you to come in so that we can assess you, okay? When we assess you, we will just tell you, okay, all you need to do, we need to assess you to be sure that, okay, you are healthy enough to undergo the procedure. And the moment we are able to ascertain that you are healthy enough to undertake the procedure, then we just book you and tell you, okay, come on this also day for your procedure. Like I told you, it's not an emergency. After the procedure, okay, we also, even before the procedure, we actually sit you down and explain the procedure to you again. We also let you know that, okay, these are the side effects that you could experience. It's not like you, you, you must experience them, but these are the possible side effects because we always want to keep our patient informed before the procedure. Then after the procedure, there's a follow-up that we do. Okay? Most times we don't admit the patient. The patient go home. It's just a day surgery. You know, they just go home. But we actually follow them up. We ask them to come the following day. We assess them to see that everything is going according to plan. Now, before I go into that, let me still mention one of the things we do with the fat. That's what we call stem cells. Hmm? That's what we call stem cells. These stem cells are actually the progenitor of all the cells that are in our body. The stem cells are the ones that differentiated into bone, into skin, into all the organs that we have. So sometimes we do what we call stem cell therapy. And the stem cells themselves, we get them from the fat. 
So sometimes some people come to us because what they actually wanted is actually stem cell therapy. Okay, so we harvest this, the, the fat, we remove the stem cells, discard the remaining fat, and then we transfer the stem cells to them. That is a different topic on this one, on the issue of stem cells and what the stem cells do. To prevent complications, there is a limit to the amount of fat that the surgeon can safely remove depending on whether the patient will be discharged immediately after surgery or admitted to the hospital. We'll take a quick break now. The program continues shortly. Well, I, I kind of think that it's a personal choice. So whatever you may like, I may not necessarily like it. So I believe it's a personal choice. Personally, cosmetic surgery is not something I would like to do because I understand it to mean artificially doing some panel beating, if you want to use a street language, of the human body to make it look better or to look new. And uh, I would rather prefer natural approach to looking young by exercising, eating, balanced diet, and if need be, getting supplements to look healthy, to be healthy. And I would say it's better to be healthy than to look healthy. So I don't think that cosmetic surgery will necessarily make you healthy. For me, some people when I see when they do that, the surgery, some people, it's good for their body, but some people not good for their body. But for me, I know, I never get this place before, I don't want to do that one. I'm against cosmetic surgery because there is nothing like nature, being natural, you get? So what God has given us is what we maintain. Adding artificial to it hmm? is not advisable because it has many, many disadvantages. All those things, you know, it has effect. As for me, oh, I don't support it. It depends on what everybody wants. You understand? If, if you are going directly to do those things, it's good. But applying like creams, all those things, it has a lot of effect on it. So as for me, I don't support any young girls to go for it. If you want to go, just go straight and do it. I think the cosmetic surgery is better than using the creams. Because those ones, you have 50%, not 50, but at least, let me say 40. You have 40% assurance that it's going to give you what you want. But as for the cream, when you stop applying it, it's going back. That one is for sure. And that, that time, you start looking, um, like, you start describing yourself. So people that know that you have a bit of, later on, they'll not even recognize it. Welcome back. If you're just joining in, this is Healthy Living on Trust TV. The conversation is about liposuction. Talking about the risk factor in cosmetic surgery, I can reliably tell you that cosmetic surgery comes with little or no side effect at all. Because is actually a programmed operation and don't forget the person coming for cosmetic surgery is actually healthy meaning the patient actually has strength to withstand the stress of cosmetic surgery and apart from that most cosmetic surgery procedures we don't put you to sleep you are actually awake and because the patient is awake at least the patient is communicating with us and if anything is to go wrong the patient will actually draw attention to it you know apart from maybe little infection here and there if you carry out your procedure with an experienced hand and somebody that is trained the chances of side effect the sanctions of complication is really really very low we don't actually do liposuction for weight loss because at the end of the day you undergo the procedure and you are just losing maybe just like maybe five pounds, 10 pounds, 
which is not significant when we talk about weight loss, okay, is actually for the physical appearance of the individual. That's the main reason. You will lose weight quite okay because we've taken some fat out, but it's not really significant for you to say, okay, you want to do the procedure because you want to lose weight. Because there are other ways you can actually lose weight without you having to undergo this procedure. The thing I actually want everybody to know about cosmetic surgery is that it's really, relatively very safe. I know there are a lot of stories around cosmetic surgery, you know, about the complications and things like that. But let me tell you, if you, even in Nigeria right now, in a year, we have millions of people that do cosmetic surgery now, you know, and it's only once a while you hear about complications here and there, you know. Cosmetic surgery is extremely safe because we play just under the skin, okay? There are other procedures that we do in cosmetic surgery, okay? For instance, we talk about all those breast lift, we talk about breast reduction, we talk about breast augmentation, okay. We also talk about uh, what butt lift, uh, butt reduction, butt augmentation, you know, and all that. You see, uh, we also have what we call tummy talk. This is really good for women that are done with pregnancy, giving birth to children. They are done with that, okay. Maybe a woman wants to have 10 children, she already has her 10. Now she wants to look, let's say, the way she was when she was maybe about 25, okay, before she started giving birth. Okay, we do what we call tummy talk. That's like one of the procedures that we have to put the patient to sleep, okay? But that also is relatively very safe. And by the time we are done with it, you see the tummy will return back to, this, to what it was before the woman started giving birth. Apart from that, you know, some people, they have their arm that will just drop. We call it arm lift, okay? Especially some women that are on the big size, on the big side, you know, you see the arm will just drop, you know, that's the way we tighten it and lift it up for them. Some people just want to maybe change all the crease lines on their face, you know, it's making them to look old, you know, cosmetic surgery can cosmetic surgery or cosmetic procedure can actually take care of that. In life, what I say is this: whatever you you want to do, you must make your budget. Okay, things become unaffordable when it's beyond your budget, right? Okay, I will not say cosmetic surgery is cheap, and I'm not also going to say it's expensive. Hmm? But it all depends on how, if you, if, you, if, 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 if you really need it, then it's not going to be expensive. But if you don't need it, then it will really be expensive, okay? Because the procedures, are, I mean, the, the various procedures I mentioned, they are not, the cost is not the same. And even apart from that, you know, for instance, if we're going to carry a procedure like liposuction on a lady that is slim, it's not going to be the same cost with somebody that is actually obese, okay? Because the quantity of fat you take out from a slim lady for the shape to come out is different from what you are going to do in a woman that is obese. So it, it, the cost will depend on the assessment. That's why we don't give cost to patients until we have actually assessed the patient, okay? Then we are, we are quite accessible. You are quite accessible. You know, a lot of us, maybe if you, we, we tell you, okay, maybe our consultation fee is not that much. That is actually affordable to a lot of people, you understand. But the procedure, the cost depends on what we see after assessing. Liposuction should not be intended as a weight loss procedure. When performed in the right patient, the goal is to improve, control, and decrease limited areas of fat deposits in the body. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of Health of Living. Until I come your way next time, I'm Aisha Salihu.